So today we're going to be talking about benign episodic pupillary dilation, which is BEPD. It's dilation of the pupil that is episodic and benign. So it's benign because there's no imaging necessary and there's no cause. It's usually idiopathic or considered to be a migraine equivalent. It's episodic, which means it comes and goes. And in between episodes, the pupil is usually normal. But I have seen some patients that had a tonic pupil. The pupil normally is dilated. And it's not really clear whether it's a sympathetic overaction that's dilating it or a parasympathetic effect. Um, however, I think there's people on both sides of the argument that I think the predominant feeling is that it's a parasympathetic effect. So BEPD is also known as benign unilateral medriasis. It can occur in an alternating fashion, which is one eye and the other eye. Uh, it's unilateral though, and I, I don't image this. So it's got a very typical presentation. Usually it's a young female who has a history of migraine who reports multiple recurrent stereotyped episodes of unilateral, although it can be alternating, episodic pupillary dilation. If you happen to capture it during the event, the patient's pupil might be a little bit distorted. And so those patients have been referred to in the literature as tadpole pupils. So do you know what a tadpole looked like? It's all oval like this. And that also, that sector nature of it suggests it's a sector paresis that is neurogenic and also probably on the spectrum with the postganglionic or ganglionic source of the lesion, like adiastotic pupil, except it's transient. So it's like a shape like a tadpole. The differential is between adiastonic pupil, which normally would not come and go, of course, and pharmacologic dilation, either on purpose or by accident. Either way, these are all uh, benign. So normally what I have the patient do is take pictures of it. So we'd like to have selfies so we can see what it looks like because many times they have the complaint, but they don't actually have the finding. And when you see them in the office, it's a normal eye exam. So the description alone is usually good enough, but we'd love to see selfies of it. So a normal pupil and then it's benignly dilated, and then sometimes it's a sight. I think most patients just want reassurance that it's benign. The one caveat I will have for you, however, it's ice, this has to be isolated, okay? So, and what that means is there can't be any other finding. So don't be making the diagnosis of BEPD if they have ptosis or they have any motility deficit, that's third nerve palsy or Horner syndrome. And so you don't wanna make the mistake of saying it's benign when it's not. So it really has to be neurologically isolated. And the second thing that you should know is if it's an older patient and there's no migraine history, you still have to think about carotid disease. So the overaction of the sympathetics is the opposite of a Horner syndrome. And in a Horner syndrome, you get a small pupil that's a sympathetic lesion, an oculosympathetic pathway lesion. So patients with carotid dissection, for example, can have an acute Horner's. There's the opposite version of it where there is nerve damage, but it causes overaction. So instead of sympathetic underaction, it's sympathetic overaction. And so those patients, we probably would look at their carotid. Those are rare, but often they have other symptoms like amaurosis fugax, where they have the ptosis. So in summary, BEPD is exactly what it says. It's a benign, episodic, pupillary dilation. Please make sure it's isolated. It's usually a migraine equivalent in young females. And selfie, selfie, selfie.